Okay, let's talk about the NES exam and specifically the middle grades maths exam so you can be certified to teach at, uh, mathematics at this level. So uh, welcome to this video. We're going to take a look at a practice problem here. Just kind of gauge to see where your current math skills are at. A little bit about myself. I'm a math teacher myself. Uh, I've taught middle school math, high school math, even some college. I have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree and then later on uh, became a school teacher. But um, you know, I know what it's like to take these certification exams. Uh, and if you're not, if this is your first one, you really have to be ready for them. Um, I took the Praxis exam, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe like 50% of the people that took that exam failed. At least I uh, re uh, recall that being the failure rate way back when I took it. Uh, and you know, it just, so it doesn't make a difference what you know, math background you have. You can have a pure degree in mathematics um, or physics or whatever the case is. You still need to study for these exams. And what can be a little deceiving um, for the middle grades, right? Because you're thinking, oh, you're going to be doing maybe pre-algebra, arithmetic, that type of thing. You're not going to have to know pre-calculus, etc. Well, that's not the case. Um, as you probably already know, when you take a look at what's going to be on the NES uh, middle grades math exam, you definitely need to know a considerable amount of mathematics. Um, now, if you find that you like my teaching style, I actually have an NES middle grades math uh, test prep course. I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video. You can check that out if you like. But the whole idea that uh, I want to stress to you before we get going with this particular problem is don't be that person going in, scheduling this test, paying for the test, sitting down, taking the test that misses a, the passing grade by one or two points, right? Um, you want to get your life moving forward, you know, in education, start teaching this stuff. Uh, and it's, by the way, a very rewarding grade level to teach. I really enjoy teaching uh, middle school. It's completely different than high school, but nevertheless, it's, um, it is all rewarding. So let's get to this particular practice problem. Now, do yourself a favor. Don't, uh, you know, don't pause the video, then go look, you know, look it up, you know, uh, maybe on your computer to figure out, you know, get your notes out. See if you could do this from memory. Okay. So here's the problem. And it is find the vertex and the y-intercept, and then I'd like you to graph the following. So I got some stuff down here that should mean something to you. So find the vertex and the y-intercept, and then graph this thing. Just a basic sketch. So if you think you could do that, you might want to pause the video and try that. Of course, I'm going to go over it, and let's go over it now. Okay, so finding the vertex of what do we have here? Well, this is a quadratic function, okay? It's a quadratic function. So the way we find the vertex is, let me just go and write the formula down. It's minus b over 2a is the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is going to be we're going to evaluate the function at minus b over 2a. Okay, So this will be our x and y coordinate. So let's focus on that first, and then we'll get back to the y-intercept, and we'll give this thing a, a quick sketch. So uh, what I'm talking about here is obviously something that's probably the Algebra 1 level, definitely not pre-algebra, but can you be teaching Algebra 1 at the middle grade level? Absolutely. Okay, You could be teaching it at the 8th grade. It's not uh, uncommon okay, uh, for um, people in the 8th grade to be taking Algebra 1. So you got to know this stuff. All right, so let's get into it. So minus b over 2a, well, what does that mean? Well, we got to look at the, the quadratic uh, trinomial here, and we got to make sure it's in standard form, right? Highest to lowest power, and it is. So the first coefficient here is going to be a, so a is equal to 2. The next power down, okay, the next degree down is going to be uh, b, so b is equal to 8, and then this is c, right? So c is equal to 1, and obviously we need the, to know those values for the quadratic formula, but that's a different uh, discussion. So let's go ahead and find what uh, x is equal to. So x is going to be minus b over 2a, so minus b is going to be minus 8, right? So minus 8 over 2 times a, which is 2. So always double check your work and be like, okay, that's good. So this is going to be minus 8 over 4 or negative 2. All right, so our x, uh, cor uh, x value for this coordinate is going to be negative 2, okay? 
All right, so now let's go ahead and plug negative 2 into the function. So here we go, here's our function. Uh, and I want to find negative 2. So we're taking our original function, and we're going to find f of negative 2. So this is going to be 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 plus 1. So let's carefully go through this. So negative 2 squared is obviously positive 4. So this is 2 times 4 plus negative 16 plus 1. So we got 8 plus negative 16 plus 1. So this is easy to figure out. I'm just kind of just doing some basic mental math here. So 8 and 16, this gives me a negative 8 plus 1. And finally, I get negative 7. So f of negative 2 is equal to negative 7. And this is our y component, OK? Uh, y value for the coordinate. So here we have negative 2, negative 7 is the vertex, all right? All right, so hopefully this is all familiar to you. And if it isn't, don't panic. Uh, I'm sure you learned this somewhere way back in your, you know, um, education process. If you're taking this exam, you know, obviously, you know, you've already, you know, uh, completed, you know, probably pre-calculus or college algebra, or maybe even much more than that. You could very well have a degree in uh, physics or whatever the case is. But even if you you know, um, taking differential equations and uh, calculus and, and everything else. Remember, again, I'd like to stress this to people who are teaching mathematics. Uh, here you are way over here with differential equations, abstract algebra. You know, your mind, you're used to working way over here. You've got to come way back over here to, to young kids that are 10, 11, 12, all right? So you have to you have to think like how do you how do you you know communicate these concepts to them remember you as a teacher you're the translator of this information you have to teach you are uh, you know that is your job a teacher is someone who knows the material but really what makes you a teacher is if you can communicate and transfer the material to your students just because you know the materials doesn't mean that you're going to be a great teacher. I'm sure we've all had teachers who were like super genius smart, but could not teach well. And I'll put well in there because, uh, you know, it's a different, that's a skill, that's an art, all right? So anyways, like my point there is even if you've taken advanced math, go back and immerse yourself in, in fundamental algebra, everything that's going to be on this uh, uh, exam. Okay, so here we have a vertex. And now what we need to do is get our y-intercept. So our function, let's just write it here, is f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 1. So you know that f of x is the same thing as y, right? So this is 2x squared plus 8x plus 1. So how do you get the y-intercept? Okay. What, how do you go about doing that? Well, we have to let x equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, all right, then we get the y-intercept. So it's pretty easy. So y, here, this is just going to be 0 squared plus 8 times 0. Just write it all out. All this stuff zeroes out. And you can see y is going to be equal to 1. Okay, so this is our y-intercept here. And now we can kind of pull this all together. I'm going to erase this. We've got our y-intercept. We've got a vertex, and now you should um, be familiar with one other thing too. This value, this because this a value in front of the x squared is positive, that means that this graph is going to be what? It's going to be a parabola. And because the leading coefficient is positive, it's going to be a happy parabola. All right? If it's negative, it's going to be a sad parabola. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and pull this all together. And just we're talking about basic sketch. And parabolas, as you hopefully remember, are symmetric. So we should be able to get a pretty decent sketch here. All right, so let's go to our uh, vertex, negative 2, negative 7. So here's negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's negative 2, negative 7. And our y-intercept is 0, 1, so right there. Okay, so let's... Uh, Let's kind of just sketch this out a little bit. 
something like so. So now to get the other branch of the parabola, I just need to try and kind of draw something symmetric like so. Now, if I wanted to, you know, really get into uh, the specifics of this graph, I could try to find these two points. And those would be what? Those would actually be the solutions to this quadratic equation, right? So if I went and, and found the two solutions to these to this quadratic equation, those are the x-intercepts. Then it can really do, uh, you know, sketch a nice um, graph. So let's just put this here, 0, 1, that's that point. And then here you have some symmetry. I can go on and on about this stuff because um, one, you know, this is what I teach, this is what I've, I've mastered over the years. And, you know, even though, you know, I have a degree and I've done a lot of advanced stuff and whatnot, it, to me, it's, it's uh, I enjoy really teaching this level of mathematics because you still, you, you still just keep learning, okay? You can really keep learning and getting better and better at um, you know this level of mathematics and I'm talking about algebra geometry or you know this this type of thing so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and call this video a wrap um, again you know uh, if you want to check out my uh, NES uh, math prep course for the middle grades uh, I'll leave the link in the description if you want to I would uh, invite you to subscribe to my uh, channel I'm not gonna say hey subscribe subscribe uh, but I do encourage you, if you like my teaching style, I literally have hundreds of videos right now currently that are on my uh, YouTube channel, and I'm posting all the time. So um, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up if this video helped you out in any way. And leave me some feedback. Let me know um, what uh, what your plans are. You know, why are you choosing middle school? Or are you going to be going for your high school certification? Um, you know, any feedback is good feedback for me because it lets me know how I'm doing and also gives me ideas on future videos. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time and I wish you all the best in your teaching career. Um, you know, it's a, I love teaching. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't come without challenges. Okay. It, uh, and just because you know the math portion of it, you're going into it. If you're not a veteran teacher, you're new to teaching, you want to get what those veteran teachers are going to teach you all the other things about classroom management and all that kind of good stuff. But that coupled together, you know, it's a, uh, it is a wonderful uh, career. So I wish you all the best on the exam. Thank you for your time and have a great day.